Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us around the world. Tell somebody we are live right this minute. I know some people don't expect us to just be live like that, but that's exactly what you need to be doing. Yep. Expect a word in Juices and at any time. And I just felt in my spirit that something is supposed to happen in your life. And I came here and said, let's just do a broadcast for the ones that are listening because you were ready for a word in Juice season. Listen to me. I want to minister on this subject, which is very, very important. How to increase your rank in the spirit. I don't know if you're getting this. How to increase your rank in the spirit. It's possible to increase your rank in the spirit. And this is going to be just a short thing, but it is for somebody out there who is waiting to be a general in the kingdom. You know, sometimes we look at generals in the kingdom and think these are superhuman beings and, and these are, are blessed people or rather they have a special grace that we don't have. The reality is there is a key to increasing your rank in the spirit. I don't know if you are getting this. I don't know if you are getting this. So if you look at um, what the Bible tells us, it tells us of generals that were able to... Listen, do you understand that even death was not supposed to be so? Wow. That there are people like Elijah that would go to heaven by a chariot. Of course, people say it's a whirlwind. And a chariot, a chariot uh, separated them. And a whirlwind took them to heaven, took him to heaven. With the horses, everything, separating them. But watch this. How on earth is somebody going to heaven in flesh and is in heaven right now in flesh? Because there's something that they have touched that somebody had not touched. Notice these are not New Testament realities that they, that, that, that they are in. They are in Old Testament realities. Experiencing a New Testament reality. So there is an ability of God to push you to a certain rank in the spirit. But if I teach you the principles that get you to that rank or teach myself the principles that get me to that rank, let me tell you something. There is the lifetime that we have is short that the reality of it all cannot be taught in your lifetime. So you find a way to accelerate your knowledge in those things. And push yourself to another level where even though the information will take you a lifetime to learn in order to get into the realm of the people that said we don't die, we'll go to heaven by a chariot of fire. Something, something, something can happen right this minute where you can actually push yourself. I want you to read something in the book of Romans. Book of Romans, chapter number eight. Chapter number eight. Are you hearing me? Palozi, come on, that place to Kushia. In verse number um, 23, it's so amazing that the Spirit had already given us a certain ability to see beyond and to experience the beyond. I don't know if you are getting this. That it says, says here in the King James, not only they but ourselves, also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. See, if you read it like that, you will never understand it until you read it in the New Living Translation where it says, And we believe us also grown, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, a foretest of future. A foretest of future. A foretest of the future glory. What he's saying is the Holy Ghost has the ability to present to us a certain level that we can increase our rank in the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. But if you read again, you realize the Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Yeah. Now it's giving us a key that the word of God in you, when you increase it on a daily basis, you don't take your time of the word. Automatically, you are increasing yourself in the realm of ranks. A man with a word is more dangerous than a man with prayer. Hey. Now you didn't hear that yeah. now. So, so many of us think the prayer is the thing that gives us the ranks we need. Let me tell you again. Prayer has no power. Prayer is not powerful. Prayer has never had power ever. If prayer had power, then Africans and African continents and Asian continents, uh, we're talking about Asian countries rather, uh, like India would have the richest people on earth. It's not so. It's not so. It's not so. I don't know if you're getting this. Yes, sir. You're getting this, right? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Prayer has no power. I, I, I want to I get you to get this. Prayer has no power. What, 
prayer has is the ability to transfer the power that you have to the place of efficacy where you want it to really really impact and put a change on that's the power of prayer to move to flow with the power and get it to another level you see this electricity in this place right now these lights you you can actually see or these cameras that you see they are not the electricity they are wires that have gone through these things and and these wires are carrying these cables and wires are carrying the electricity so when you see these lights they are a manifestation of power they are not the power they are a manifestation of it and the cables are not the power they just carry so prayer is like the cable that carries the power to the source from the source to the place where it's needed so people with the word are more powerful than people with prayer now you say but but isn't the prayer coming from the word it is that's why it's called prosuche prosuche simply means what you have inside is what you put outside now, if you understand, that means you're using the Geiger principle or the Gigo principle in computers, where garbage in, garbage out. So whatever you put inside is the thing that comes out. But there are some people who pray, but they don't pray according to the word. And they can do hours and go on mountains and mountains and mountains. Have you noticed that this is the reason why most prayer warriors are broke? Most prayer warriors are the ones in the prayer line. Most prayer warriors are the ones that wait for your car after church service. Why? Because ranks in the spirit are not obtained through prayer. They're obtained through the word. And when you get the word, it will force you to pray. But when you just decide, I'm going to pray, I don't have the word. You will lack power. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice, the Bible does not say faith comes by prayer and praying. It comes by the word of God and the word of God the, consistently you wake up on the word. You feed on the word. Afternoon feed on the word. Have lunch. Wait lunch. Wait dinner. Wait breakfast. So many people would just jump and go to the, for breakfast. Listen, rings in the spirit can be increased. Rings in the spirit can be increased. How can people like William Marion Branham be in America... And he's going to another country and he knows the intersection of the road. What road is called? The child who will be, who will be hit by the car by name. And the ambulance that are going to be there and people trying to get this. And brain matter is out of this cow. And he knows it before time. When he gets there, the brain matter is out. And he grabs the baby and grabs him like this and holds him. <laughs> decrease and came back to life. Look for the brain matter. It's not there anymore. What causes people like this to act like this? What causes them to act in this way? It's a rank that is already different. I know what you call it. You call it different in anointing. Anointing is, anointing is higher. You don't understand. The same anointing we have received, the same anointing they received. It's the grace that's different. But that grace can be increased. The Bible says increase in grace through the knowledge of Christ. Through the knowledge. So your knowledge of the word increases your grace. Oh, you see, people talk about increasing of anointing. The anointing does not increase. And I understand it. You have heard preachers preach it. There is no one scripture to talk about the anointing increasing. Right. Not one. It's simply grace that increases. But how does grace increase? You heard it. Grow in grace through the knowledge of Christ. So you got to get in the knowledge of Christ every day in the morning, pre-breakfast, 6 a.m. You're reading the word. Find a verse, read it. Listen, put an alarm on if it's possible. Start up in the flesh, it will wind up in the spirit. You quickly do it. Why is it so that we have touched some, some elements of this glory? Once in a while, we touch it and then it is released from our lives. Symbol. We reduce in the word. And while you guys are watching right now, some of you are very young. And some of you are just wanting to go to another realm in the spirit where you can experience these things. And, and you can do these mighty wonders and forces and, and show this power. The reality is, if we had people like us when we were growing up, telling us exactly what we are telling you young people to get into, imagine where we would we be. Right this minute, 
When people talk about major and say, oh, he can do this. Oh, in the prophetic can do, do this. Miracles, he can do this. Ridiculous are miracles. Exponential miracles. You, you, the point is this. Exponential growth. The point is this. You are talking about a man who he had no mentor to start with. But you have a mentor. Your advantage is you have some people like us who can tell you your lifetime is too short to learn the things that make you to be like Enoch. Your, the Enoch was not in the New Testament. <laughs> you have a shorter lifespan that you can't handle everything that makes you a magnet of spiritual resources. You can't. So you are at a disadvantage already. But you had one advantage that you have mentors that can actually get you into this thing and push you into this thing. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. I want you to see something. Verse number 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Are you getting this? For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Watch this now. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. For they, for then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, now watch this. Notice here. It's saying the carnal mind is enmity with God. Does God not like your mind? In order to increase your rank, does he consult your mind? The point is very, very simple. What God is trying to do is a simple thing. Are you getting this? God is trying to get you to understand something that is very, very simple. God is trying to tell you the mind that you carry right this minute, you have one disadvantage. It is so learned in the things of the natural. The school you went to taught you the natural things. The science class you passed Taught you natural stuff. The history lesson you passed, the one you told your father and your father was like, whoa, congratulations. It was educating your mind in the things of the carnality, of carnality. So you are an expert, a master, a doctor, so to speak, in carnality. So when the spirit is introduced, it goes against the information of the, of, of the natural. And carnality goes against the information you have in the spirit. But remember, you started from... I don't know, from grade one, from uh, year one, you were studying carnality. 20 years in school, studying carnality. And only one Sunday where you studied spirituality. So your body is conditioned to understanding the things you should not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The things you don't understand, are is a, that's exactly what your body is conditioned to. So when we come in and say, you can actually walk through those walls. You say, uh, um, um, physics, um, immediately, your body con goes against it immediately. Why? It is information. And that information is not just information. You were actually examined in that information. And you were given an A in that information. Now, this one is just the Bible talking. The immediate thing is to say no. If you hear men of God saying, um, I was in another town like we did in, in America. I was in another town. I checked in and the next minute we're already in the place that we're supposed to go. Oh, why are they lying? Guess why you are saying lying? You were not there. But you are convinced it's a lie. Why? Because information that you passed. The, the college that you passed, the grade you passed told you it can't be like this. It's not possible. You can't get to another location without traveling, without transport. You can't. So you are so learned in the things of the, of the natural. Are you, are you getting this now? You hope you are getting it. 2 Corinthians 4. Uh -huh. Daniel Barry said, finally I've managed to find you. Um, a big listener of the prophet and always flowing. You have made me so mature. Uh, ben, it says a man with the word is more dangerous than a man of prayer. Exactly. But a man of the word becomes a man of prayer. Mm. Now, now, ah, I want you to see something that the disciples said. 
And 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 10, I'll start. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Watch this now. Very, very, very powerful statement. This is the truth. For we which live are always delivered unto death. Do you notice? He says for we. Now when you hear we here, you're thinking he's talking about Christians. He's talking about the, the, the apostles themselves are the ones uh, that he is representing here, Paul. Now here, delivered unto death for, the, for Christ's sake, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So he's talking about this mortal body. Now hear what he says. So then, death works in us. Oh, okay. In what? You just told me about your mortal body. Now he's saying death is working in us. To do what? Watch this now. But life in you. Hmm. He is saying, you know, the, the apostles are really are represented by Apostle Paul here, are saying, we die so that you live. No, no, you didn't get it. Because you, right now you are still on the superficial. You are not on the fundamental. You are dealing with what you think is a spiritual reality, which is not really just spiritual reality. It's a physical reality. He just mentioned to you that there is a mortal body that is suffering, that is facing death. So he's saying we have given ourselves to death so that you Christians will never die. Natural death. So the disciples expected us to live forever. Said we are dying so that you live. Said, we follow what Christ did, but for you, we want you to live forever. Not even die, not even have a funeral service. Now, do you understand right now? When we hear the reality of the Bible and what we experience are two different things. People, pastors are standing at funerals, are burying, burying saints and burying Christians. What's wrong? The problem is simple. Our lifetime is too short to contain the lessons that can make us immortal. Because we ignored our mentors when they were looking at us. So right now you can actually ignore a mentor you're looking at right this minute. Because you think you know everything. Or you have seen something that you said, but he doesn't have the car that I like. I even have a better car than him. So you ignore his mentorship. Whereas that is the thing that can make you a a person of rank in the spirit. Ranks in the spirit are obtained by the word. But that word is delivered to you by a mentor. A mentor, a father who is experienced. You should learn from. Only stupid people learn from experience. That they experience themselves. Wow. Experience is not the best teacher. Mentors are. Spiritual fathers are. Experience is not the best teacher. If you can go through the same problems I went through, then you're stupid. Wow. Very simple. Say, I'll learn it on my own. I'll learn as I go. Have you ever heard people say, we'll cross that bridge when we get there? Yeah. Who told you there is a bridge? Yeah. Hmm. Let me tell you some statement you should never forget. God is a God of second chances, but not a God of second opportunities. Wow. I repeat this. God is a God of second chances, but not the God of second opportunities. You can be given a second chance, but are you going to get the second opportunity? No, you didn't get that. You can be among people like myself in this ministry or another man in another ministry and be close. And you say, God, I just want to be close again to the prophet. The prophet said, now you are back, you are now close. But guess what? You no longer work here. Uh, but I thought we are back. Yeah, we are back, but the opportunity is no longer there. Right. But I, are you okay with me? We are very okay. We can't even talk. But what about the job? No, no, no. I can't give you that. Do you understand the difference now? Yes. God is a God of what? Second chances, but rarely of second opportunities. Wow. Mm. Come on. Wow. Hey. So you can mess up somebody and they forgive you and they greet you every day because we should love everyone. Because when we forgive, we should show the sign of forgiveness. Love. How are you? Good. How is family? Good. Can I come to your house? No. Why? Because I know the moment I put you in my house, that's what messes you up. So the opportunity has been deleted, but the chance has been given. So we need a situation where we, we never mess up our mentors. 
Never mess up your spiritual father. Never mess up anything. As long as somebody can deliver you the word, very important. I was talking to somebody. Somebody was telling me, I preached to this couple. I've preached to this couple for two years straight. One person came to them, spoke to them two lies, and they left. And I said, do you understand now how people fail to increase ranks in the spirit? Because they listen to two minutes of a lie and they grab it and are excited and leave. And yet there is a word that they were preached to for two solid years that didn't get into them, but a lie got into them. What is that? Carnality is more than spirituality. So the balance between carnality and spirituality makes you the, of a higher rank in the spirit than your peers. You can increase your rank in the spirit simply by deciding today, that's my mentor. That's my man of God. And I'm going to listen to his messages. I'm going to listen to her messages. I'm going to do this now. You have already increased your rate. Why? Because before that, you had no schedule for the word. Now you have scheduled time for the word to get into your system. You know, the, the slowest progress I've ever seen is in the gym. Lowest progress. But it is the highest progress, but you won't notice it. I remember going to the gym first time. I went into the gym like this and I looked in the mirror and I was like, wow, 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 wow. It's looking good. Things are working out. Because, you know, you are pumped up at that time and your muscles are swollen or whatever that is. And then you see some change. Yeah, in that mirror going with biceps and going like this. And then after a few hours, you'll be like, what happened now? You, you understand? What, what, what is taking place to my body? Then three months later, you look in the mirror, nothing changes. Four months later, you start realizing, mm, I think something is happening to me. And you have more energy. You have all this. It just shifts like that. What is taking place? Very simple. The progress, we're not seeing it. Same thing in the realm of the spirit. When you increase in your rank, you might not see it. Your rank in the spirit is seen by the appetite in the word. Your appetite for the word. That determines your rank. If you realize that you are losing your passion for the word, your rank is going down. In fact, not going down. It has already gone down. Now you need to pick yourself up. If you have no schedule for the word and for prayer, trust me, you have no rank whatsoever in the spirit. No ring whatsoever. This is why some people never touch money. Some people never touch anything. Their relationships are just going. Nothing is taking place. Money can't come. They can't even stand anything that is good that comes in their lives. Why? Ranking the spirit has gone down. You can increase your rank today. You choose the person that gives you that word, number one. Number two, you look for scheduling that word. Word moments, word breakfast, word lunch, word, word four o'clock word. Uh, remember what the disciples did. They now called 3 p.m. by the time of prayer. I said the, the hour of prayer. They changed time to hours of prayer. It was no longer, it was no longer time. It was no longer three o'clock. It was hours of prayer. The hour of prayer. Imagine the hour of prophecy. Mm. Imagine the hour of the word. Somebody calls you. Hello. You say, look, I don't answer at that time. I saw you miss call, but I don't answer at that time. I'll be having breakfast. Say, what breakfast? Word breakfast. You have breakfast at 6 a.m.? No, it's word breakfast. Schedule time for the word. Schedule time for the word. I love you all. See you again in another episode. We love you so, so very, very, very much. And increase your ring in the spirit. This is part one. We'll talk to you again in part two. Love you so much.